Good morning, Covenant City Church. Our devotion today is taken from Isaiah chapter 30, verses 19 to 22. And I hope that these verses can provide some comfort and encouragement for those of us who are perhaps going through times of suffering right now. So let's go ahead and read the passage together. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 19 to 22. For a people shall dwell in Zion, in Jerusalem, you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes shall see your teacher. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Then you will defile your carved idols overlaid with silver and your gold-plated metal images. You will scatter them as unclean things, and you will say to them, be gone. So in this section of Isaiah that we're looking at this morning, God is showing that when his people are faithless, he remains faithful. So here um, in the chapter, uh, in this chapter of Isaiah, the Israelites have disobeyed God's word and his commands, and then they've experienced consequences because of their rebellion. But in these verses, we see the gracious way that God restores those who have disobeyed him and the way that he cares for those who are suffering. So verse 20 speaks directly to those people who are suffering right now, right? Isaiah writes, though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. And maybe that's how we're feeling today, this morning. Maybe we feel that our teacher has given us the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Maybe we feel that the things that we're being asked to carry in our lives right now are just too hard. Maybe our career is falling apart and we're facing unemployment, or maybe a relationship that we've put hope in has ended. Maybe we're facing wounds from hurt in our past or problems within our family, and we don't know how we can continue to go forward. And maybe even we know that everything in our lives comes from the hand of our loving and good father, right? Our teacher. And we know that God is sovereign in our sufferings. And even then, sometimes we cannot help but cry out, how long, O Lord, like the psalmist, right? How long must I continue to face this adversity and affliction? How long will you hide your face from me? So know that if you are feeling that way today, you are not alone. And here, Isaiah gives us a promise to hold on to when everything seems dark. Your eyes shall see your teacher. What a beautiful promise we see here in verse 21. Though we are eating the bread of adversity and drinking the water of affliction, our eyes shall see our teacher. For a Christian, there is no more secure feeling than to know that God is near. And Isaiah says that not only will our eyes see him, but our ears will also hear him, will hear him guiding us and telling us when we are to go to the left or to the right. So maybe some of us have experienced seasons like this, right? Seasons when we recognize what we know is true in our heads, but we feel and experience in our hearts that God is really and truly all that we need. Perhaps we can think of times in the past, um, or maybe in our lives right now, when we've been brought low and God has felt near and present. And we remember how we might have felt in those moments when the darkness seems to fade away because of the nearness of God. But if we're honest, we might also be thinking, this is not always how I feel when I'm in times of adversity, right? We might be remembering times of when, when the suffering felt so real and so intense, and it felt like God was nowhere to be found. Have we sometimes maybe felt like God is ignoring us, that he doesn't hear our cries and he doesn't bend low to help us? So here in these verses, we can see a truth though that goes beyond our feelings. We can see the reality that God promises to be near us no matter what. He promises to fulfill our every need and we can trust that he is good. If we are in Christ, we know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and he will guide us and he will teach us how to live. So even when we can't feel it, even when we can't see it, even when our hearts are dry and worn out with crying out to the Lord all day long, we know the truth that our teacher is near and the day is coming when we will see him face to face. 
So friends, when we pray and we can't see yet how God is answering our prayers, we can trust that he hears us. When we can't see how the story will unfold, we can trust in his character. We know who he is and we know that he gives us the strength to persevere through the affliction and adversity that we face. And then also verse 22 gives us a concrete action for those who love God, those who know that he is near and who have experienced his presence in the middle of their affliction and adversity. We see here that uh, God's people dismantle and destroy their idols. So maybe we don't have physical idols in our home that we worship, but I invite us to think about what are the idols in our hearts? What are the idols that maybe even make this adversity and affliction that we're facing all the more intense? If I idolize my parents' good opinion of me and I have to endure a time of conflict in the family, that makes my affliction so much more unbearable. If I put my worth in the number of zeros in my bank account and I'm experiencing a time of financial instability, that might make me feel like I'm not just suffering adversity, but the world is crashing down around me. So here we see that a people who have been changed by God are called to dismantle the idols in their lives so that we can know God and see him more clearly and trust that our identity, who we are, is built on Christ and he is our rock and our sure foundation. These verses are certainly not saying that every time we experience suffering, it must mean that our hearts are misaligned. But rather, they're teaching us that the reaction of someone who knows God will be to worship him and him alone, even when we face times of suffering. So friends, I encourage us to endure and persevere in the midst of affliction and adversity, trusting that these trials will do their work in us. They will make us more like Christ and they will open us to know more of God. We can work to dismantle the idols in our lives and we can work to endure times of affliction because we are looking forward to the time when we will weep no more, when we will dwell in the new heavens and the new earth and our eyes shall truly see our teacher, no longer through a veil, but face to face. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the reminder um, that we read this morning in your word that you are near to us in times of trouble, whether or not we can feel it. We know that is true. We do ask that you remind us of this truth when we face times of affliction and adversity, that we will be able to hear your voice as you teach us through your word. Father, would you reveal to us the idols in our lives and show us how to repent of them so that we might wholeheartedly live for you. Lift our eyes up of our, off of our circumstances, we beg, that our eyes might see you and our ears might hear you and we might live um, for you and you alone. We pray these things in your name. Amen.